Yeah. It's over at 12, and nothing starts up till 3. The parade starts at 11. The parade kicks off the afternoon activities. At 3. Yeah. At 3. Yeah. yeah. What this proposal does is it, it attempts to build on what James describes as the different audiences. Now, you can try to merge those audiences in some fashion, but it would require a big variation in the Kiwanis activity because they have to be doing it at a different time of day. Right. Uh, you have a problem here that one event starts in the morning. Another event starts around noon, and another event strolls where they want to start eating. You've got a big block of time yeah. trying to fill it in. Well, you can't fill it in. Yeah, with, kids, with kids under 10, I'm either going to pick the parade or I'm going to pick the Santa and the so, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm our, not going to do both. Our original, in this time. Sorry. our original proposed timeline when we first put this together was have the parade at noon and in the morning the events with the parade. We then were trying to find what is going to bring people out for the stroll other than the stroll itself, and the tree lighting won't do it. So we took our biggest draw, which is the parade, and put that at the start, hoping then that the band kids and their parents would stay for the stroll, even knowing that a lot of the others might not. We can revisit that, uh, if the concept. That's why I asked the question. That's why we did it. It was to have something to kick off the stroll, and then that crowd, we even looked uh, uh, potentially ending the parade instead of at the old middle school, ending it at the old King Drug Lot, where then those kids and parents and families are right there at the site and they easily get back to it. It's almost like you're running two separate events. It is exactly two separate events on the same day. And it's dark by about 5.30. Uh, yeah, we usually have the tree lighting start at 5.15 and we flip the lights at 5.30. Uh, the great big lot there, shooting the archery place is okay. and crossing sign. Yeah, because taking it all the way down the hill, mm -hmm. everybody just goes up the side street there and they never come back to Main Street. Right. And uh, people who've been in the parade, you've seen it. Once you turn that corner and get past Elm Street, the crowd disappears. Yeah. So uh, the only question is whether fire and police would be happy with the logistics of emptying at that location. Uh, Amanda's offered to help get permission for us to use that lot for that purpose. James, let me ask you a question. <laughs> um, right now, the stroll, you've got the stroll in the afternoon. Um, that automatically tells me you're assuming the stroll crowd is not a morning crowd. Uh, or else you've excluded the morning crowd from being the stroll crowd. And obviously the stroll heavily falls on OTBA to, to you know, manage and, and be there and so forth. But isn't there an opportunity to, to perhaps either stroll at a different time or have two different strolls or do something. I mean, it seems to me that the, if the morning crowd is the young children audience, you've, not, you've kind of you know, taken them out of the stroll activity and, and my question would be, why would you want to do that? With the exception being Santa Claus is at the stroll and where Santa is, parents with children will be. Santa is the single biggest draw, especially uh, when the photos are free. Okay. And uh, Councilman Gilmore, your, your kids, you had to pay for Santa photos a few times, I bet. Oh, yeah. It can be costly. Oh, yeah. This certainly can be adjusted, and in fact, the timeline might not fit exactly what y'all have in mind. You might be thinking more like 5 to 10, as in the old days, so we can adjust the schedule very easily if the concept works. Breakfast with Santa, the peak crowd is around 9, 9. 9.30, would you say, Steve? Yeah. What I've seen is around really, 9. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, what I'm thinking is uh, not to have the stroll to conflict with uh, uh, the earlier part of the morning, but in the middle of the day, the more, a little further up in the middle of the day. In afternoon time. Yeah, early afternoon. So that it's, uh, you're drawing from both of those different, you know, demographic categories, whatever you want to call them. I have any question for And I would say, what, we've got <coughs> these people sent here on side. We got Bill Pack, who's a Louisville resident. We got Amanda Ferguson, who's also a Louisville resident. We got Sharon Ellis, also a Louisville resident. Would y'all, all three, want to speak? One of you want to speak about this, or you want to just answer questions? Well, I'll gladly speak on behalf of OTPA, because we have the OTPS, we are both kind of partnering, okay. you know, on this together. Okay. But uh, I guess to address the uh, bringing in vendors, I mean, you have your built-in brick-and-mortar vendors down there from, you know, retails to restaurants, uh, you know, and quite a bit of selection that is going down there, so, you know, you kind of build on what you have. Can we all do Kevin Ford? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can. We 
right? Yeah. <laughs> that's all you really that's all you think I really want. I should watch some kettle corn. Uh, but uh, I'll work on that one for you. But you know, you know, you have that already built in. You know, there's there's several restaurants and there's um, you know two new ones coming before we even get to holiday at the hall, along with uh, you know four retail stores already down there and building on that. You know, over this uh, next period of time. So I say because once you got it, don't bring in other vendors. So we can organize as a group well enough to be entertaining like other, I've, you know, Bishop's Art District, uh, the Gainesville Square, you know, they have very successful programs that I've participated in and watched out when you did the business buy-in where you go to one location and maybe it's a photo booth and some kind of spike punch or, you know, hot coffee, cider, you go to the next one and they can build an ornament and, you know, each location has an activity for kids or even, you know, a cohesive um, activity, you know, throughout all the businesses, as well as we talked about finding a location down there for kids to take pictures with Santa Claus. You know, we can, we can do all that built in with what we have down there, and I think successfully. You all put a lot of time and thought into this. What is your take? I don't think I would push it later. I think the later, push, I think you're going to get some return from people that do go to the morning activities. You will draw a few of those, especially that are here locally. They'll go home, hang out, go tend to other business. But I think the parade helps bring them back out. I think having um, an activity, uh, whether it be the Christmas windows or the stroll through the streets. Um, you have the gingerbread house, which um, has been pretty successful. Uh, you know, with its grassroots, you know, well, this year is a little bit different year, but, you know, it's been really successful and has nice, um, you know, draw to that in itself. So I think there's enough key elements to kind of buy that time with the little hour and a half maybe increment that you have between the parade ending and the tree lighting. And, you know, create enough activity to keep those people that are down there for that period of time and then end it at the tree lighting. And then they can go on with their evening, whether it's dinner, going home, you know, meet up with friends to continue on their night. Well, and that was part of it. The tree lighting was basically lost. You know, this year we didn't have it at all, and last year nobody showed up for it. And so there's there's nothing there's nothing um, to get them to go to it. And, but it typically is enjoyed if they're there. And so that was part of our timeline. What we were thinking of is if you get the you get the kids or you get the crowd for the parade. You're going to have the parents, grandparents, and so forth showing up to see everybody go down the street and the participants. Then you, they're there, based hopefully right at the right time to then have another event going on, being the tree lighting, any possible awards, maybe the announcement of the uh, gingerbread house, um, and also possibly calling out where some of the windows are for you know for the new downtown windows. We've been adding on average for two windows a year, and um, you know, so that, those are progressing year we after year. We have ten thousand dollars easily invested in uh, you know window displays that we you know line up and down the main street. If you haven't seen them, it's, you're definitely missing out because there's people that travel you know to here and check them out, and they're just in awe about you know how cool our windows are. I'm surprised at how you know professional they are. They no. are yeah. They are definitely. <laughs> yeah. And that's, well, and that, you know, and that's, you know, the, the windows are kind of nicer to see at night. What we've lost over the years that we started with was, you know, if you can picture, the, the street was typically closed off years ago, uh, kind of the, the era that John was talking about, and then people would stroll up and down the street, go in the shops, maybe have some cider or whatever. Um, have carolers, and it was just a relaxed atmosphere. It wasn't packed. And we weren't trying, and, and frankly, we're not really trying to get 10,000 people on Main Street at 8 o'clock at night. We're just trying to get people to get down there, stay down there, realize there's shops down there, and so that we might get more people to put their shops down there. Uh, another thing um, that we talked about with James was uh, you know, places like mine, a couple times we had sponsored, you know, we basically had the front of our office as uh, sponsoring another uh, Louisville um, retail. So it might be uh, uh, the spices or whatever.
but people that are maybe a cottage industry that don't have storefront could then be on the storefront. We are the vendors. So, you know, having to have vendors out there, you know, taking and kind of like the, the previous discussion was where's all the money going? Well, it's going to the vendors and they're going back to Oklahoma. So, um, we're the vendors, the money is staying in Louisville if, if they're in those shops. Um, so that kind of helps in that respect, too. Um, uh, what was, was there, um... well, let me ask you a couple of questions. <coughs> then I'll, I'll, I appreciate, I really appreciate both of your groups wanting to get back in and taking an interest of the cost. Basically, that was a great one, so we have an association to do a Christmas over here, so that's that work. Uh, I, would you have any problem, though, if we had, like, the motorcycle vendor, and I think like a guy over on, he moved in there on 35, come down and set up, and he, I think he's got one of those big trailers, brings out here and sets out and sells all his motorcycle cars on the morning, you know, for the morning session of it, his vendor being down there selling all the, all the motorcycles, I don't know about that, but, but people do. And that, but that's the one thing I heard from bikers, we didn't have that form there. And that hang, keeps them hanging around. Now, after the craze, I mean, after the, the motorcycle car runs over, they're going to kind of dissipate, and then that place will probably leave. But I think that might help us in the morning. That you go and have a problem with that. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. 